Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. So we're going to be tackling the three empty squares puzzle today and we will just continue from where we left off from the previous episode. So this is going to be the puzzle number six for three empty squares. So yeah, let's get into it. So right now we have uh, White's turn to play. We have two choices, either A1 or A8. So for efficiency's sake, usually in such an endgame situation, it's a lot easier to just choose the move to play uh, or at least choose the line to count whereby your opponent does not have uh, any other choice but only one move in response. So it's just a lot easier to count. So right now you have 22 white discs. If you were to go to A1, then black would only have the A2 choice to respond. And then you would just naturally follow with A8. So this is a very straightforward line and it's a lot easier when you're short of time to just go for a straightforward line and count uh, and just to ensure whether you have a backup, you know, a direct line to actually win the game. And then you can, you know, uh, with a little bit more time, you can consider the other option. So if we were to count this, it would be 22 plus 7 discs, that will be 29, and then minus 6 white discs. So that will be 23. And finally, when you play the last move over here, you will collect 7 discs on the vertical column, and that will make 30, and then you will take 3 more discs on the diagonal, so that will make 33. So you would uh, you know, be sure that you can actually win the game by taking A1. And of course, if you were to take A8 instead, uh, you would consider you know, two other options. Uh, after that, black would either play A2 or A1. So if we were to count it out, we would take four discs over here. So we would have 26. And let's say if black were to take uh, immediately to the corner, and take four this off of us, we would have 22 again, and then finally when we play this move, we would add seven this to it, which would only give you 29. So as long as if you choose A8 and you simulate one of those moves and you counted that your opponent would actually win, then you probably shouldn't go to that, that line since you already guaranteed you know, that there is a possibility of a loss there. So instead, you should just go for this uh, A1 over here. And then when your opponent responds and you would only just have you know one choice over here and you would win the game. So in this case we win win 33 to 31. Okay, so let's move on to the next puzzle, number seven. So over here it's Black's turn to play. Uh, I think okay, so basically you have two choices. Either you just creep on the edges. So this is again similar to what I mentioned earlier in the puzzle number six. Go for the go for the move or count the line first where your opponent does not have a choice, uh, but only one choice to just follow along the line. So if we have 30 black discs right now, we go 31, 2, 3, minus 3, that would be 30. And then finally we play the corner and we flip 1 and 2 plus the disc that we just played, that would give us 33. So since that already guarantees us a win, we can comfortably rely on this uh, particular line. And of course, if we have more time uh, in the end game, we can also consider uh, counting whether this would give you more discs uh, in, as compared to G, G1. So if let's say we were to play here, we get 34 and opponent takes G1, we take H1, that would be 34 minus 6, you get 28 plus 3 and you essentially get plus 1, 2, 3, 4, actually that would be a draw instead. So not too favorable. So let's just go for the easy, simple approach for the win. So that is 33 to 31. So let's move on to the next puzzle, puzzle number 8. Okay, so over here, it's Black's turn to play. So this is a little bit tricky. So even though it's an odd region over here, you want to just sort of count out and be sure that you try to retain parity in order to win because if you were to take the corner right now it would be a pass in turn and it's essentially the hyper even number theory concept over here so if you would just hastily play the corner uh, just because you wanted a corner into a1 what we would get is one two three discs on top of the 29 that we already have that would give us 32 and if we were to play uh, a2 to follow up we would have 32 33 4 5 minus these three discs when white responds back at b2 that would give a, a draw and of course if we, if we were to play black black and then white that would definitely give us a loss because 
white would sweep an entire row across the second row over here. So that's uh, too much. I mean, that the exact count would then be 32 plus 4, 36, and you would have minus 6. So you would lose the game, actually, 30 to 34. So in general, you probably wouldn't want to play uh, either the corner since you've already counted it out. And if you were to play to um, b2 over here, you would also give white the option to sweep again. So that is not something we want to achieve. So instead, we should actually go for uh, start off with a2 and feed off the corner and then just grab the couple of last couple of this in the middle. Or if white were to jump into the middle, you would then be able to grab the corner. So if we consider this, we would have 29 plus 1, 2, 3. So that gives us 32. If white were to just take one disc over here, that would give us 31. And when we make the final move to B2, we get three more additional discs. And we would win plus four based on black, white, and black. And if black were to go here, 32, and white were to jump in to B2, that would minus three this three black discs over here. So we would get 29 again. And when black finally takes the corner, it will be 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So either way, we should win by plus 4. So, okay. So we win 34 to 30. Okay, let's move on to the next puzzle. Puzzle number 9. This is uh, White's turn to play. So the setup, uh, based on what I can see here, is quite similar to one of the earlier two empty square puzzles we talked about. So if we were to play to the x square right now, uh, this would potentially give black a double, I mean a swindle with two consecutive moves. So if you were to play white here, black would simply just go to a2 and then it would be a pass and black would capture another move to a1. So to avoid that, you should actually just take a2 here and then black would take the corner and sweep off the disc. But at least you retain one more move to play in response and over here you have 32 white discs. So finally we would then win the game with 4 discs uh, advantage. Okay, so right now let's move on to the last puzzle for today's session. So this is Black's turn to play. So right now you have two options. So pretty much uh, you can you should actually count out the, the sequence because essentially both options uh, involves establishing uh, access to actually achieve uh, the access to h7 square so you have to count out whether uh, you know each of these squares uh, if you were to play one of each white would just simply uh, retaliate on the other so you would need to be able to count uh, on a silo basis over here so you can just take this as a two square region and just count plus one plus two minus one so if we black were to go to c1 it will be plus two minus one and give you an aggregate of plus one and finally uh, plus 2 minus 1 and then finally when you play the last move to h7 it will plus another 4 so starting with c1 uh, finally c1 d1 and h7 will give you a total aggregate of plus 5 and if you take plus 5 plus the two discs that you place that will give you 7 so 7 plus 26 will give you 33 and of course if you were to start off with d1 and you basically get plus 4 1 2 3 4 and minus 4, white would just take back uh, minus 4. And at the same time, the excess that you gain into h7 is different. It's at d3 disc. So you actually flip fewer discs along this mini diagonal. So you just plus 1, 2, 3. So essentially, if you were to go d1 first, your aggregate is actually plus 3. And if you were to go with c1 first, which is the logical and intuitive choice because you have the corner at a1, what you want to do is just generally try to establish uh, you know, a creep sequence or just use your strength to your advantage and just kind of move from left to right over here. So yeah, the favorable sequence over here to win would be C1, D1, and then finally H7. So finally we win by 34 to 30. So yeah, that's essentially uh, the end of today's puzzle solving. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you at the next one. Goodbye.